the next tab is the admin tab once you click on the admin tab you'll see the database path here and what that's showing you is where this database is actually saved at so if you've got it saved on a shared drive and you don't know the location of it then this will show you where it is this will also show you the computer that you're using right now as you can see I'm on HP Envy but whatever the army standard is for or a CPU workstation name you'll see that displayed here next the version of Microsoft Office that you're currently using if, if you're on a, a version of Microsoft Office other than 2013 I know some commands may be ahead or behind let me know and we can change the references um, specifically to kind of support what you got going on at, at that particular location installation um, I'm going to transition over here to the 4187 signature blocks basically when you click it you get an option for each NPC so Rob Gronkowski is going to be the signature block that's going to show up on every 4187 generated for an enlisted soldier for any orders of 4187's I cut for a warrant Russell Westbrook is going to show up in that signature block and for any officer Stephen A. Smith will show up as the signature block for those individuals if you want it to be the same person on all those orders just type the name rank branch and duty title in here for that individual and put the installation the state and the zip code I wouldn't put more than that because it probably won't fit into 4187 but put that information in there save it and exit and that will list those individuals on your 4187's from there on out you don't have to keep typing it every time you actually cut 4187's current logged on users if you click that it'll pop up this little form that will show you who's logged on to the database again most people don't need this but for those rare instances where the database is located on the share drive you don't want to update any data while multiple users are in it just come here and it'll show you who's in the database and you can go ask them to log out of the database or restart that computer or whatever whatever needs to happen and it'll show you the number of users but you'll see it down here pretty self-explanatory changing unit icons you can upload two custom images for your database in this particular case I've got an iron horse first cab patch notice no white background and I've got a US Army basic logo you can download these off the internet you can probably pull them off of your command and staff slides but I would ask you not to use an image that has a white background in it because it looks absolutely terrible when it prints out on the reports if you want to see how to remove that white background you can go to AGTube and search around there's a video where I show you how to remove that white background from an image so that it just shows the image with no that ugly white square around it so if you double click it you'll see that the 11C patch in here it's a PNG and I can add remove it save it I can do whatever I want to do to it but you will want to remove it and then go back and add your image and browse for it and, and, and locate it that'll change the two icons that show up on all the, the upper left and the upper right hand portion of all your reports as well as on the database menu So getting back to the admin tab, upgrading from an old database, what this does is it exports your gains because you've already allocated gains to battalion. When you upload all your information to a new database, you don't want to go back and run that gains roster and put it in there again. Because if you do it, what's going to happen is 
All those gangs are going to be back at the Brigade Alpha Alpha because that's where they're assigned in Web Edas. But this exports your officer and enlisted gangs that you've allocated them a, a battalion so it keeps that same information. And every time you upload a new one, it doesn't override it. It also exports your task orb so that you don't have to create that again, giving each battalion a short name. But if you know your UICs and you know the short names and the orders that they should go in, it should be no problem for you to go back in and put that information in. But this just gives you a method to go back in and do that also. So again, that's the admin tab. In a nutshell, I'll cover the AG2 tab next.